combustion engines are out, electric vehicles are in, but are they as green as they seem? Calculating emissions and pollution isn't easy, there are quite a few different factors to consider. But first, let's take a look at roadside emissions. This is where electric vehicles shine. They produce no greenhouse gases once they're on the road, drawing energy from a bank of batteries inside the chassis. A traditional car with a combustion engine produces 122 grams every kilometre. That might not seem like a lot, but with each car doing an average of 8,000 miles every year, that works out at 1,570 kilos of CO2. It takes around 70 trees a whole year to suck up that much carbon. So that looks like an easy win for electric vehicles. But it isn't quite that simple. We also have to look at the electricity stored in the batteries, as well as the impact from producing the batteries. We'll get onto that later though. There is another roadside emission that is normally glossed over without thought. Particulate matter. In fact, only around 7% of air pollutants at the roadside are greenhouse gases, with as much as 93% of pollution at the roadside due to particulate matter, which comes from brake dust and tyre wear due to friction. And because EVs are heavier than traditional motors, there will be more friction and potentially more particles released into the air. These pollutants don't travel too far due to their weight, so the effects are localised, but it is still a point worth considering. Manufacturing With reinforced frames for supporting heavy batteries, electric vehicles require more raw materials to produce. Batteries are responsible for around 50% of the emissions associated with electric vehicle production. They require a huge amount of electricity to make. They are also mainly produced in Asian countries like China, Korea and Japan, where the use of carbon in electricity production is relatively high. As a result, EVs emit around 60% more than traditional motor cars in production. On average, manufacturing an electric vehicle emits 14.7 tonnes of CO2. That would take 675 trees a whole year to absorb. On the flip side, manufacturing a car with a combustion engine emits 9.2 tonnes of CO2, a year of work for 420 trees. Doing the maths, that means an average traditional car with a combustion engine can be driven for around 45,000 miles before it is emitted as much as an electric vehicle with zero miles on the clock. Now let's talk about the grid. We have established that at 45,000 miles on a traditional car, we are on a par with a brand new electric vehicle. But the emissions from the electric vehicle don't stop there. The national grid, where electricity is taken from to power the batteries, also has emissions but these vary country to country, and this has a huge impact on lifetime emissions. In places such as Norway, where 94% of electricity is produced from hydroelectric dams, there are hardly any emissions from charging an electric vehicle. However, Norway is an outliner. Most countries still rely heavily on fossil fuels for generating electricity. Although this is changing, let's use the UK as an example. As I type this up, the UK's electricity grid is currently powered by fossil fuel. 46.9% with 20.1% renewables. The rest is made up from the likes of nuclear and biomass. For a country like the UK, which is middle of the road for carbon and our electricity, it has been estimated that an electric car will in fact produce less CO2 than a traditional car, but it will still emit around 75% of what a traditional car would. That is greener than your average car, but not as green as they seem. So. Does that mean you should go out and buy an electric vehicle as your next car? Well, if your main ambition is to do your bit for the environment, no. If that is your goal, the best thing to do is to hop on the bus or ride your bike. As far as the environment is concerned, even used cars are a better option than a brand new EV, since the carbon from production has already been emitted. The best thing to do is to run up the mileage for any cars that have already been made. To get to the point of only having 75% emissions from an electric vehicle, 150,000 miles have to be clocked up. So don't rush to buy. Keep your old banker going for as long as you can. The final point to cover here is recycling. Currently, batteries from EVs are difficult and expensive to recycle, with hazardous and polluting chemicals in the cell. But the components that these cells are made up of are valuable. At this point in time, only around 50% of battery parts are recycled, but this is changing. Volkswagen have recently announced a plant that can recover as much as 97% of the materials used in EV batteries, and more manufacturers are likely to follow suit. 
Even without these new expensive facilities, manufacturers are already reusing degraded batteries in industrial power banks. Power banks can be used to store energy, like a giant battery. This can help energy providers store excess energy produced by intermittent sources like wind and solar. They can also supply the grid with power when energy production is low, preventing blackouts. Both of these scenarios are becoming more and more common due to the growing prevalence of renewables in the electricity supply. A whole year